we finally found it and uh we're, we're getting underway we've we've set ourselves up in the commentary position uh-huh with our x-ray eyes and vision we're here now we're here in a and we're ready little ready for Virtus pro versus guana now obviously there was a lot of surmising and filling times i know i mocked them but you gotta give them credit you never really know when you're gonna have to fill for a while and it was a mix of riddles and ruminations on how this game might go and I guess it's one of those curious situations for Virtus Pro because although they're quite low in the board, they've been fighting every single game pretty much tooth and nail. Yeah, they have been. And it is going to be a very exciting matchup because Kavana are trying to, you know, secure themselves a top four position. They, oh, uh, plays they managed to fight themselves into due to other teams, of course, lacking some points in themselves, having really good performances. And Virtus Pro, well, they have been in a slump. I think we can call it that. I think it was a five-loss streak they went on in the middle of the stage. Um, so it's up to them now to try and make up for that lost time and try and set themselves up to potentially even enter that top four still. If they win here today, they have the opportunity to put pressure down onto the teams like G2, Vitality, and even Rogue to get that final spot. Well, a fair removal here over the... Yeah, pretty standard bands. I guess the only one that you look towards as potentially being pointed is the Hard Destruction. Obviously, it's often cited when you come into this map with Hard Destruction bands. Okay, but where are they really used? Sure, Ace has an insane pick rate right now. It's like 85, 86% last time we had the yeah. full stats put together. He's had a big presence this season. Coastline hasn't. And Hard Destruction on Coastline in general doesn't really get the big play. No, it, it doesn't really. Uh, I'm ripped. Okay. Normally, I would be a bit confused if I was playing ranked with the reinforcement being placed that way, but I'm I'm going to assume that it's uh, it's meant to happen. With the mirror on the board not... as well. Yeah, that's what I'm going to yeah, say. Yeah. Normally, we place the mirror towards service entry. However, we also know that these teams do like to go for a bit of top floor control. That's and it. you see Kenry, you see Gorgona. So do you really want to place it there? Or do you want to put the mirrors up onto that top floor, which is probably what Kajak is actually doing at this moment, uh, just having placed one down just to make sure that you're going to be able to hold a little bit of that top floor control. I'm curious, obviously, I think as anyone is, to see where Kajeka does double those down and puts themselves in a dangerous position. And, well, that's a standard one. That's the first one. The second, is it on? Yeah, there open it is, country. looking towards yep. uh, the big open reception desk. You do, you, you know, it's one of the things where backwards reinforcements, which we're using just in that term, it's easier to throw explosives over the back of a reinforcement than it is the front, according to a lot of people. Yeah, that's because of the little, uh, little red beam that is up there that, you know, of course, is a bit of a different hitbox as yeah. well. So there's a bigger opportunity of it bouncing back if you throw it from the front. So it sets you up in a position where obviously if you're playing from deep and you want to try and put some destruction down, it can be played that way. But whether they just said, well, we need to get this up and we know where we want to put everything else, who knows? Maybe I'm digging too deep. But talking of digging, no pace wasted in terms of Kavana. Very quickly putting pressure, obviously dropped the Banshee on the entrance of service and hot dropping down into the bathroom. You can see Malusi has a very keen eye on the drones and the potential of somebody swinging there, making sure they have a lock on this verticality. And the pressure is actually coming in potentially from underneath that was. I think they found themselves pressured and pushed back away from the mirror window. They're still holding a very long angle with a very good gun. It's watched from underneath, but the pings are coming up round Pasha pre-fire a little too early doesn't catch the head of a man who escapes but who gets caught first is Gorgona with a C4 yeah it's going to be able to pick up one however the refrag will be coming in sloth able to pick up Rask and that brings us back to a 4-4 four four situation gives the opportunity to go for a bit of uh, vertical I would say but Milan picks up the kill then onto sloth Moves it all up to Kendra now with that big caber with the sledgehammer to try and make sure that they get all the control they need vertically as Milan trying to fight back and fall back towards the site. Well, there's only so much you can really do on the outside when you're waiting and watching your bodies get dropped internally. It still puts them in a pretty tricky situation. They've got this verticality, but they've still got a lot left to do. There's one body playing loose towards Sun with a rotation possibility of office. They have all of that map under their control, and that is the side of coastline you see most often. Big rotations, big plays, and big possibilities around the danger zone at the pantry. Mirror is popped open, makes it a little bit more uncomfortable to hold the site. They're trying to clear themselves 
themselves an angle into service. And they are steadily just finding... Ooh, almost found the mirror there with the yellow ping. And Arkic, in the meantime, drops Karjeka on the opposite side and is able to catch Mira as she's forced off her original location. And Pasha is played further and further back with Milan waiting to want to apply some pressure across the lobby. And now you see with the vertical there why Mira would know on that spot wouldn't have worked as Anarchic trying to sneak himself in to go for a plant, but will go down. And that means that the fuser now will be dropped as well. VP have this round in their hands. All they need to do now is hold off the two members of Kavana. Milan will do so by picking up the first one. And it's only up to Kendry now. Dropping the hatch most likely. No, not even. Saving the KD. And VP is going to be able to pick up round number one after dropping the diffuser. Who they try to sneak into. And, uh, into... Uh, Server's entrance, but of course, wasn't going to be helping because there is that angle from the kitchen door. Is uh, the first defense successful for VP? The cover came through when they needed it most. And to be fair, I still think Kavana could take away from that round. They were quick, they were aggressive, and they knew how they need to apply the pressure to a hold that is lesser seen. Not only for the fact that Mira was obviously on the board, where she's quite often banned here, but in the setup in the lockdown of what they wanted to take care of first they knew and had the eyes and the watch on the rotation up the white stairs too they were doing okay but as we said before although Virtus Pro's score might not give that story they have had very good games a very good season obviously they've only really been able to pull one full fat win versus um and then since then it's been a little bit of obvious back and forth but is their recent victory going to be something that compels them and powers them to be able to finally do that thing that seemed a little bit lost on them, which is lock out a map? That is the question, of course. Will they be able to lock out the map? As I really like to see Pasha use 10 of his hit points there, opening up two of the rotations, making sure that Kusheku doesn't have to use literally all of his shotgun ammo for the uh, renovation, you can almost call it of the sites of course you, you have the full triple wall that has to be opened up at the bottom so you can try and challenge any potential blue bar uh plant from the lobby oh, that's rope for now he from pasha that's uh that's uh unlucky for sloth being picked up quite early there and pasha just dashing out with the oryx and uh, Grizzly being picked up as well. Very good start here from VP. Yeah, VP wanted to meet that early aggression. They realized how quick Kavana were in closing down themselves towards the building and went, well, let's catch them mid-step. And, oh, they caught them. Grizzly dropped two. That is so big. They lose the fear. They lose Ash. They lose that solid ranged soft destruction. The ability to try to monitor and meet at those angles. Those Malusis are going to be a much bigger problem now. And obviously the ADS is going to be so much more important when you only really have six flashes and the two grenades that need to be protecting Mr. President and their way through. It has to be pitch perfect from the throws across the board now. Kenny. Clearing his way around luggage and the backboard of the site to start putting pressure above. Saw the edge of somebody, I believe, a little too late, but isn't going to take the fight as of yet. Still has a lot left to do. Opening up the door right there to give himself a bit of a better angle as uh, right now might be able to actually find Norix of Pasha, but decides to not go for the angle. That is, of course, often something that you do as an attacker. You do not want to instantly take the angle because if there is a defender holding it, you'll lose your head. Pasha, on the other hand, right now, however, is going to be holding SWTG. Will be taken down by Gorgona, but able to find an angle somehow. Just very tightly. Taking care of the Yokais. They will no longer be able to burst you out. And with a minute and 15 seconds left, that might make a plant for Kavana a little bit more likely. Well, yet again, trying to clear that pocket of space. They're concerned about the catch of anyone rotating around from the lobby towards the office side as we see blue bodies further pushed and pinned further and further away. But as soon as they try and cross the entrance of Sunroom, it's held pretty tight. The flashes drop first. They pre-fire an angle. Nobody's home. Milon is the one that's keeping the firm eye from security across that sunny corridor and into a narkic. They put bullets in but don't get the drop and they realize that they need to apply some pressure. A grenade switch. Wings round with Pasha holding the angle from inside the courtyard. Everything is still technically in Virtus Pro's hands right now with the three splits they have on the angle. Waiting to hear the audio. And there's the swing round the corner. And there's the drop on the man. They couldn't quite get the kill in time, but they pick up the trade now. 20 seconds left. Kendrew gets dropped as he tries to get a bit of cover. Suddenly find themselves on the wrong side of a two versus one. Gorgona gets the diffuser back. Goes for a pre-fire towards Milon, but... 
With only a handful of seconds left, he has to try something big, brash and bold. Swings close. Kozeka was a little bit further, and Virtus Pro get a little bit further away. And I tried to go with the skeleton key right there, but unfortunately, wasn't able to get too many pops off. And due to that, it is going to be VP able to pick up their second round in a row so far. And we haven't even gone to hookah yet, to hookah billiards. And it will be coming up now. Normally, this is considered the first game, the primary boom site for many teams, that is at least. However, we've not been to coastline for a very, very long time. So a lot of it has potentially changed. And we already saw with the Mira change up that was coming, that there was a different kind of kitchen hold, one that you might not completely expect. Of course, the mirror window that we did see in theater is one that you would like to see, but instead of using the one towards the pantry door, which could have, of course, of course been useful if there was no vertical play, wasn't played. And well, sometimes you see a mirror here as well. Not the case this time, however, due to the fact, of course, that a lot of these mirror windows can be taken care of from the roof if you just manage to find the right angle. It's got a danger donut for a reason. That is, of course, a big gap that is in the middle of the building. And that's what makes Mira a bit less useful on this site. Well, if we we're going to talk about one of the sites where the hard destruction is often used, it is this one. You obviously have the big angle hold you can take from VIP on the corner of the wall. You have the potential as well of the big quad wall that backs all the way along the bar where they've obviously got themselves bandited up to make sure it doesn't get popped open. That, for a lot of teams, is pretty much it in terms of hard destruction and coast but it's something where obviously we're seeing habana still pretty frequently you can still do big angles obviously i'm talking in the method of this is coastline compared to every other map in the pool where hard destruction is often required it, it's not just this little part of extra opening angles it's your way into buildings or into sites and places like club or villa here it is great for angles sure but it's not the make or break of a lot of teams pushes this is just as i said one of those sites where things can be a little bit more impactful See two of the members of VP just holding below in pantry and in kitchen. No push is coming down yet, but of course there's another reason for that because sometimes you do see a VIP push coming down. Pressure throwing that C4 will not find anybody. He actually doesn't even go outside the window, but now knows that there's some pressure. There is a member down in theater. Gonna go for the push in. Drone will be taken now. Pusher will be rotating back to safety. But Kavana have taken that theater and bedroom control. Still steadily droning their way underneath as well. Pasha is going for a little bit of a play here, aggressively monitoring the movement. Obviously, no C4 left as he went for it with early, but didn't quite catch them there as Sloth is able to escape yet again. He's concerned about the swing round up the white stairs, but is otherwise not going to be confronted as of yet as Pasha realizes that they'd be playing their life out of their pocket. And so far, what we've seen from VP is they've been very adept at rotating it, knowing when to take the angles and when to take the fights and when to play themselves into a little bit more safety and security. And here, well, did just that. Softed up security, pulled themselves back underneath the offices and wait for the bodies and the plants try themselves on the default where you can see the floor is already open ready for the potential of Pasha to spray up through and stop anyone going for that quick cheeky plant. Oh no way he just floor banged in there is that the default cam that is still up or is that a yokai that's the yokai in the corner right there it gave probably a Z ping and he managed to get the kill down that's the entry that is a very annoying way for sloth to die he was just droning out they they found no resistance from billiards side and they were like all right let's see how many people are actually there but then suddenly they're coming in but there is the push as well in the meantime grizzly pushing through they have control of billiards now some c4s are popping off but it seems like they might be able to go for a plant it's only milan left now against the four of Gavana. well they found a fury in that drop through the floor i talk about the potentially has to stop a default plant he wanted to go one better but to be honest that pushed Kavana one further they just went deep they had the read that obviously somebody was underneath and off site and went well that means it's a four versus four on the site let's take it push deep push hard and push the bodies especially if somebody is wrapped up in a drone they find their first round they find a little bit of the momentum in their favor and this game is turning into all of those signs of a bloodbath i think that we kind of expected and very much hope to see yeah <laughs> i wanted to say like you know you see sloth is speaking once he's speaking twice taking out the bench and still nothing is happening so it was the right call okay let's just quickly drone it there's no pressure being put down from vp back upon us Yes, there is one below, but we can easily outrun him with all the verticals that were there. 
Of course, got taken down from below, but Kavana still went with it. They're like, all right, they're all inside of the B-Boom side. They're all inside Hooker. We can literally push in and try and take it with force. And while well, they did so successfully, able to overrun that side, pick up their attacking round so far. And now VP is going to be going back to kitchen service. They are going to be putting up the same mirror window as we have seen in the last round. And well, if you still remember, last time around, there was that breaching charge of Ash that was used to uh, make sure that the mirror window was going to be a bit more unplayable. As you see here yet again, Grizzly pushing in. Able to pick up that first one. A lot of damage being done on the side of Kavana on a couple of the members, but they still managed to get the frags down in their way. And after a quick push, then that, that is definitely going to be giving you some motivation and some momentum to push into this round. That's it. As I've said, they have not played this cautiously or slow. Regardless of the fates that they faced round in and round out, they have made sure that they're keeping pace with what Virtus Pro are wanting to play here. But in the fairness of Virtus Pro, they're two one up and they're trying to meter and monitor that pace to the best of their ability too. So this is a game where nobody is going to slow down. We might start to see the full stretches of exhaustion slightly later on in these rounds who can keep themselves moving and manipulating at the right pace. You can see, obviously, little bits of jump here is they're just trying to do the same lockdown they had before. Grizzly was on this window a while, couldn't quite catch anybody. But the C4 doesn't catch him either. A big blow of utility, but they dropped the drone in the meantime. And there's suddenly a double. Grizzly got some revenge. Baited Pasha with the jump out. Sloth putting pressure around on the Aqua side. Finds his entry for the first time in a while after being on the wrong end of it. And then gets one more deep down. That main corridor towards 90 as Gorgona finds another. This is all coming up red and orange right now as Kavana just in entirely shut down the hold that was offside. Uh, definitely so. It looks to be going so well for VP in these first two rounds and suddenly Kavana, they have managed to find out what the setup is. They have been able to adapt to it as well. And as they are pushing through right now, it's only up to Kosheka. The last man standing in a 1v5. Needs to go for the ace clutch here if he wants to bring the round towards him. He's going to not even start that out. It's a flawless round here for Kavana. A uh, sloth. Gets the final kill. Kavana really explosive right here. So after a very quick push down onto Hookah Billiards, managed to uh, continue. A lot of people with the current meta, when it sort of got announced and sort of got kind of, you know, with the nerfs on Jaeger and, and how that sort of played into it, were like, Virtus Pro could mess things up like for other teams right now. They could, yeah. they could be so solid. It's also something we said about Empire. <laughs> um, they, they, of course, won the major. Mm -hmm. The changes came through, which, according to many, would be resulting into a more aggressive kind of play style um, where you wouldn't have to worry two minutes about destroying bulletproofs, but rather you would be taking care of the roamers. That would be the new way to waste time. And that is something we, of course, see here as well. It's a multi-layered setup. Players fall back. Players go back in and try and retake the position. That is how you stall the time right now. It's no longer just by shields, banshees, evil eyes, and whatever you can find. The Russian team seems to be kind of struggling in this new meta so far. Um, plus teams like Na'Vi, for example, they seem to excel at this. No, no players have complained yet, so I think that means Easy it, it was able to set up a rehost. Very proud of him. First one of the season. Let's First go. One of the Congratulations. Well, don't, now you've said it. Now it's going to open the door for more, and you really sh you just baited it. <laughs> so if any more happen, uh, I knocked on wood. Sorry. Okay, then that's fine. Now, let's see, obviously, what changes are made here. They've obviously shaken up the rotation a little bit, had the option to go pretty much anywhere outside of blue bar, and they've opted to instead keep going forward on the momentum. They're heading up towards a hold that we haven't seen them do since they lost it two rounds ago. Can they find success here? What do they believe they've learned? Well, they've learned how to at least drop one, but what a shot from Kendrew to take care of WTG on the back with the yellow ping assistance. Knew they were playing around the sunrise pillar and were able to make sure that they won't see another sunrise again. At least this round, Milon decides he's going to try and do one better, like trick shooting goes deeper into the heart of the courtyard. The concern is if anybody gets to the top, you might find yourself dropped and slightly out of position. So he pulls himself even further back to make sure that they're not an easy picking as someone shoots them like a fish in a barrel. I think what you have to be worried about now, if you are VP, is that Kendrew might be trying to get a grenade into the position of that echo. 
Um, last time around, he was actually spotted on the reinforced wall as he takes a little bit of a tag. But of course, there is that grenade available to uh, to Kenry too, actually. And he could be using them from below as Gorgona right now, playing from the Sunrise uh, bar, is going to be potentially opening up a little bit with that Skeleton Key, putting down the pressure onto the Echo, putting down the pressure onto the Bender that is playing inside of Aqua. Sloth will be joining that soon. So we just have to wait to see how Kavana are trying. Oh, that's a Renown going there. It's going to be able to uh, make it stick. Get the kill. Gets the second as well. Pasha locking down both Sloth and Gorgona right there. And that certainly brings VP back into this round quite quickly. Wow, what a play. All built on the back of Intel there. Knew exactly where he needed to swing to next. And what a step up from Pasha. Big movements, big momentum. And... Wow, one of those things that really brings that big level of excitement back into the fold. Anarchic, underneath the bottom of Cool Vibes, wants to slowly creep up and see if he can win this first confrontation against Karjeka, who is playing this so close, waiting for the slightest sliver of that Banshee. And there it is. As soon as she wailed, so did you. Karjeka gets dropped on the cover, but they know where the last is is as Kendra is at least able to find Milon potentially through a window or a jump out either way it falls his way he's again massively concerned about the possibility of someone swinging out and going for a peek another canister another 15 seconds is burnt but it's not an easy entrance either way just charges through behind the back of the fragmentation grenade swings close can't quite find it though a good idea but Virtus Pro still at the bodies to make sure it didn't go to fruition I had to say, indeed, the right idea there, trying to push through and make something happen, try and force it to happen. It's just that the smoke moved a little bit too much to the left, making sure that the pre-fire wasn't going to stick. And what well, that means that VP are putting themselves up with that third round onto coastline, onto the defense. And, you know, it's been a long time, I know. Um, uh, um, but what, what was coastline again? Was it an attacker or a defensive side of map? I think it was a def uh, attack side of map. I almost yeah. said it wrong myself. It was a little yeah, bit. So I know that there's been some discussion about why we haven't seen it so much. Detective Dead. Yeah, there, there is to get a to lot the of discussion. Of well, let's see uh, if he's going to be able to give us a uh, concluding statement at the end of this game. But either way, if it is really and truly attack sided, then VP should be feeling well with that third round right now and having the opportunity to go for four instead. I think it's one of those things where it's tough to always get a full idea of how a map likes to sort itself out because at least in the EU League obviously we haven't seen this map with the current state of play with the obviously current operators the big changes that came through on the meta beforehand it was an attacker scene an attacker driven map before and we are in a lot of people's books in one of the most attacking driven metas that we've seen in a long time it's heavy on the idea of being able to push in get aggressive beautiful Beautiful kill. Beautiful. That's one of those ones that that's that's gonna be definitely up there in the talks of that good old top five plays of the week list. That could definitely make it to the top five plays of the week list. Uh, especially due to just the pure accuracy of those shots, just the information guiding that jump out and this time oh, no it's Claymore just being there to that's pick it. him up, you know? It's it's just clean indeed. But hey, we see uh a kitchen hold, or at least an extension towards the kitchen, and Rask is going to be the one holding it. He's a bit worried about drones, though, as Gorgona will be able to pick up the first kill. Pasha tried to challenge Gorgona. Not going to be able to uh, to end well for him, and that gives a lot of freedom here to Kavana, I would assume. Yeah, Gorgona is an absolute monster on the buck, and he's able to get in and get aggro very quick when sighted, obviously. When Sledge lost his frags, Gorgona was one of the people that stuck uh, around. Uh, when Buck lost his frags, even, and Sledge was the only one with frags, my mistake. Um, buck was dropped from a lot of teams' kind of intense hold. There's only a few big Buck players left. Gorgona was one of them, and he says he loves the pace of swapping between the skeleton key and the gun itself, because nobody truly expects it. And he's able to very frequently get in and get aggressive, and talking of expected, Milan swung there, expected Sloth to be there, and is now waiting for the drop of Gorgona, but it's not coming just yet. Not coming indeed, Milan just holding. Trying to pick up a kill somewhere, and with 1 minute 40 on that clock, they also know, of course, that time is running in their favor, but at some point, Kavana is just going to explode again like they have done in the two rounds that they were able to win, as CWTG quickly doing some scouting work right here with that Yokai drone, trying to find out where the actual players are, whether a drop is going to be imminent. As the Buck spots out the Yokai, is maybe trying to go for a little bit of a bait, trying to force the Buck to come over, but... 
Gona is not biting and instead will be deciding to open up the floors above the actual bomb site, create some vertical angles that they can use to try and facilitate the plant. Now, you will be looking down to complete a sunrise bar with the angle he has just created there, and he will be holding that as well. All they have to worry about now is the potential players that are around lobby and the hallway. Is Rask, for example, that has the opportunity to just lob a C4 over. He's going to do exactly that, but he's going to be taken out before he can actually press the detonate button. And Anarchic trying again to go for the plant. Well, that Echo Drone is ready to pop up and pop down. This possibility of a plant just couldn't get away from that second C4. And Rask is back to fighting form, though. You assume his C4 was popped by the explosion of the first, though. So he doesn't have that as a double down, if not dropped. Kendrew finds the man across the open of the courtyard. Can't quite catch the drone in the same swing, though. Is concerned of the pressure that's coming through from, obviously, Sunrise Gorgona, though. In the meantime, making things happen up above. Putting more pressure on with the buck. They still have these huge angles there's nowhere quite safe to lock it off so Kenny goes deep survives and Golgona is able to find Rask in the opposite side it is down to an echo drone and if this goes undetected he no he swings the wrong way gets the drop on the man after he gets the plant down finishes it on through the wall so he can't give intel tries but Golgona with a huge round I say he's good on the buck and then he goes and does that very well played indeed, able to pick up this final kill and of course also to cover earlier on. Bring it back into a man advantage for Kavana themselves. Now the swap is upon us. It is going to be Virtus Pro on the attack in Kavana on the defense. Kabilliard's instantly being picked up here by Kavana, unlike what we've seen from Virtus Pro. One of the things I really like that I've seen more and more is when Echo's drones were made visible, there was a lot of, oh, he's going to be useless. And a lot of that sort of conversations based on how powerful he was. But so many teams are using him just as like drones, like aggressive, like move around. They're very quick. They're very nimble. Obviously, you've got the multi-hatch play that comes into fruition. But, you know, smarter placements, sure. But the rise of seeing them as actual moving drones, I, I've really enjoyed how teams have adapted there. Yeah, actually, the, the, the yokais are being used completely yeah. different now. Instead of being hidden and being like, haha, you need to bring an IQ, you're literally screwed. That's it. Like, they're not even hiding them in sight. They're being like, okay, yeah. we're visible. I'm going to play it visible. You see people using them outside of drone holes to get information on if people are approaching from outside the map. Obviously, just there on the round, driving them all around the shop to get all the intel. It's fast mobile information gathering now, and it's so cool to see that adaptation. It's a bit like Mozzie, right? Like, sometimes you see a Mozzie hacker drone and they use it to gain intel as well, but just driving yeah. around the map. But Echo starts out with two already, and he also has the opportunity to stick them to the roof and get a sonic burst off. But what it does feel like more like right now is that it's actually an information gathering tool. It's, just, it's meant to try and drone your roamers and give them some information, some backup. And well, that is a use we haven't seen in a long while from Echo, considering it was just way too strong to use it for that. It was better to just stick it on the ceiling and don't bother about it until the last 20 seconds. Now, the way we've seen Virtus Pro playing for this season so far, as I said, oh, ooh, the timing. Ron timing there. Uh, as I've said so far, they've been able to put in really good fights against a lot of big teams, but unable to close out the map. One of the things that they've been doing so well, though, has been their executes. Up until the very end of it, they're usually so good at locking down the control of the map, the people that they need to get, and then it, you know, struggles in the later rounds. And I'm curious to see if on an aggressive map like Coastline, if it's more of the same against a team like Kavana, that are very aggressive. They love to be everywhere. They love to keep the opponents guessing where they're going to be next, where they're moving to. And maybe the slow powered setup of Virtus Pro, well, it works there, but can it work across three more? Yells coming in, Pasha, trying to put up some pressure onto the player that is uncool vibes. The rest charge being used right there will not deal any point of damage, but might take care of some of that utility. They're also afraid of a potential flank. You can see it. There is that rotation holder. Is still that man on the ground right there. I believe that is going to be uh, the elusive Kendrew. 
Russia picks up that double kill, so that means they now have control of cool vibes and they have the opportunity to try and go for the push right there, but they still know there is that roamer, and that's what Pasha is hunting down right now as he gets that kill. Late round adaptation from Grizzly, though, just putting down that mirror window quickly, allowing them for a bit more vision for this final few seconds, for this final minute that are upon them on the side of Kavana. It might give them the opportunity to cancel a plant. Well, the big double window gets popped open by Pasha, who's had an absolutely monumental round so far. It's pinged, and he's going to make sure it gets opened as the follow-up two gives them a big sight line all the way through. Grizzly has to pull even further back. This is the play that I talked about from Virtus Pro, controlling the space, forcing teams into uncomfortable situations before they go for their execute. They've been doing it so well throughout this season, but it often comes down to one or two little misplays that lead to missed rounds and opportunities here. 30 seconds, Anarchic is locking down. The bottom of Cool Vibe's going to smoke it as Milon is the one that gets dropped off. They don't seem fully aware, though, as they swing round and offer the other smoke canister on the main hookah door. The big adaptation is coming all the way over to Aqua. Virtus Pro have gone for an entirely different take here. Is it going to be red by Kavana? They seem to have some idea. They seem to have a bit of a know-how. They definitely have a C4 left. Lobbed and blown. It gets the diffuser carrier. Anarchic has gone underneath with a shotgun. There isn't a body close enough. And yet again, a little bit of a misplay leads to a missed opportunity. That's not a little bit of a misplay, Deathflug. That's a really big misplay that just happened there. Weren't aware of the utility that was still left in the hands of uh, Kavana right there, and they're able to make good use of it, even though they were down on the men count after Pasha having such a big round, able to pick up two kills on the Cool Vibe stairs, then clearing out the Roamer that was playing underneath. And as he's going up the window, even opening up that mirror window, VP decide to go for a rotate. They decide to go for Aqua instead. The C4 comes in. The C4 downs them and outs them off that round. Right now, Kavana finding themselves in the lead are trying to build upon this as uh, we are going to kitchen and we are going to service. Do have the mirror again on the board and the question is, how will they use the mirror windows? You can see one is being set up for pantry as Grizzly is doing the reinforcements himself. Will the second one go towards... Yeah, that's going to go top floor as well. Because again, we see the reverse reinforcement say, coming in to yeah. drop grenades. That's it. The yeah, fact that it's continually a reverse reinforcement, it's great to see that they are using that for that long throw adaptation towards either default or, if you're feeling really accurate, all the way to the back of the room. Accurate and strong here, though. It's a heavy upstairs hold. They've popped the mirror window in a slightly different location, obviously, but it's one yep. for the other. It means that they don't have as easy an access to the drop hatch as some teams will open that, then open the hatch so you can kind of slip through and see if you can make it. Here, you've got to go a bit wide. Oh, and Well, there's Kendrew dropped, went for... I'm curious if he went for a peek there or got caught out on a rotation. Either way... I think he tried to rotate. Yeah, not a good opener. I was going to say as well, the, the reason, the other reason you can place the mirror window there is because it makes it a little bit less accessible from the main lobby. Because you saw when the VP was playing the mirror window on the opposite wall, all Kavana had to do was just shoot in an impact from the actual Lambo door and they were able to put some pressure down. Now that is going to be a bit different now, it's a bit further away, might actually force them to take control of Bobby, but if you get the kill that early on down into Kendru, it's going to be making it a little bit easier to take that lobby control. And Kafana now will find themselves with a man down super early on in this round, with drones coming out, a lot of pressure as well. We might even see a grenade just sailing through that door very soon. My wonder is, or my question rather, is if there is going to be an ADS located due to the Jaeger playing in this position. Well, a lot of the confidence here comes from that body on 92. Obviously, if someone gets a little bit bold, they can try and swing round against Gorgona, where he's just on that lip of if they hit VIP door, they can probably hit you too. But Grizzly's able to get the first body dropped. You can see they're going for a big rotation adaptation. Hit the drop, get out of there. The pressure was a bit too hot. Milon... Well, he doesn't see anybody as of yet. Watching for the stairs rotation instead. They will very quickly become aware, but this is the body they might catch as we see a rotation there. Sloth actually pulls away, flooded with the idea of danger, but realized, well, there's a minute. It's a four versus four. Let's not risk it for now. However, the ping gives a bit of a game away on Gorgona. 
Uh, Sloth, of course, playing that Oryx has the opportunity to go for some vertical play now. There is a hatch located inside the office, so he has the opportunity to go up top and try and go for the flank, even though they have no control of some of these staircases. So that might be something that's happening. We do at least know C4s are being tossed up. You also see the Mirror Grizzly quickly going for a rotate down there on Cool Vibe stairs. So they're definitely looking to go for some vertical pressure for some vertical contest, uh, contest coming in right here from Gavana, whilst VP continues to open up. And with 35 seconds on that clock, surely soon, these kills are starting to rain in. Well, Milan wants to try and find some control there on the front door. We saw him going for a wide pick as Gorgona suffers. There's WTG getting some pressure down inside. They've cleared themselves service entrance, though, and as long as they can keep their pressure here hot, they might be able to outweigh these smoke canisters that are being thrown from deep. As I said long before, they have an angle and possibility, but it's still tough to place from that hefty range. Now, though, they're going for the plant, going for the drop. They're swinging in close to get him through the default wall. He's there. Does he see him? He doesn't quite see the planter it's a long way round and they're able to get it down but then they get down themselves just a one versus one gorgona knows where he is knows they needs to try and sneak this bait the potential players they're setting themselves up with the drone it's buck above his beloved but he's just no he's so almost stuck it too it was getting so close right there. I was almost convinced that he was not going to be able to pick up the kill due to the fact that it was just one shot was necessary to get that kill down. He, he probably thought it would have gone for the, um, you know, the defuse through the wall. Sometimes you, you see teams open up a little bit so you can try and long arm it. Not the case here, of course. And dust around will be going to VP and we do stay on a close scoreline. We do stay on a 4-4 so far. No tactical timeouts being called yet. Means that both these teams still feel like they have some control of the situation or at least haven't lost full control yeah over full grasp that means that we continue going again kitchen service the side that will be played after well cutting it quite close you can almost say if only the flank would have worked in that top floor taking down the buck that would have been the round for Alexa Kavana. 1.3 seconds was apparently uh cut into production how close it was It's not as close as we've seen before, but but it's definitely close. Yeah, it's like it's like racing. It's like you say 1.3 seconds, and to the players, that's the longest time. That that's like yeah, especially for the one doing the diffuse. Like an eternity. If you're looking at it here, it's just you blink your eye almost, and it's over. As if you have a very slow blink. That very slow blink. Oh. <laughs> One point three seconds. That's a very slow blink. I think you need to go see Milos, the optometrist. Get yourself, get yourself sorted out there. Talking of getting stuff sorted, the slight adaptation with the mirror on the top floor. They've dug it in with the mute jammer on the opposite side. They're opening the same holes, I guess. You know, in that situation, they tried to hop around and go for it instead of dropping the diffuse. The wall was definitely unreinforced, wasn't it? Where the default was. Uh, sorry, what did you say? The previous that when obviously they did. No, it's on a different wall, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, because I'm just. I guess I'm curious why they didn't try and just shoot through the wall and go for the wall bang, even to get him off the diffuser. But eh, you know, you're never in the heads of the players. They went for the long way, potentially to keep himself protected from the possibility of watch from above. But the cover was in there. Now though. Enough about the last round, we're on to this one. And as I was saying, the mirror is in a slightly different location, doubled up by the mute. They've gone with a lot softer of a hold up top, it seems. Way less utility, way less dedication here. The jammers are going to stop that intense droning, but, well, Gorgona's going to stop Pasha's entrance. And it's not, not going to be helping uh, VP quite a bit after they just managed to win the round this time around. That entry will be going over towards the side of Kavana. His last round, Kendry got picked up, unfortunately. This time, Kavana able to pick up a big frayer on the likes of VP. Seven kills for Pasha. Not going to be having an impact this time around. This VP need to find a different way. How are we going to be approaching this now? Are we just going to set up some x cars onto that mirror window? Try and take control from there. A Sloth actually doing a lot of damage down onto WTG in the, via, in the uh, musical hallway. Able to get the kills down, however, as Rask will be able to take down Gorgona. Now the question is, do they know theater is safe and do they take control? Or are they still wondering with drones whether or not they can? Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah, there goes the Gemini, making sure that they have all the eyes on everything that is in play and in place. Okay, 
we have the vertical control that we wanted before in about the same amount of time and I guess we'll see if that really comes down to the fuss of the fight itself because obviously as I said before there was a lot less dedication in terms of hard utility up here no shield on 90 with no doubled up body obviously sloth is on the roam on the opposite side but otherwise climb up. everyone else is still underneath and there's a very aggressive spot there being played by anarchic I think it is a very aggressive spot, but I think Sloth, uh, Sloth just actually climbed up back again. He is uh, playing from the Aqua side right now. You have him going through luggage, hoping to pick one or two members up as he is going quite carefully, taking out some drones in the process as well. Trays are coming in in the meantime. Anarchy going to Rask, but the grenade will oh, get him post-mortem. But with 15 seconds left, Sloth really needs to hurry now. He needs to put in that, uh, that pressure, that push into motion because otherwise there is going to be it's going to be too late again and they will be able to get the plan down as this some is ready to try and cancel it we'll be able to get some red things out impact grenade will take him oh. out and that is going to be time for kavana and that is going to be the round as well God, kobe quickly being typed in chat <laughs> i mean <laughs> it wasn't that big of a kobe i must say it was a pretty close range one but it, it's still it's still a kill. It's still uh, securing the round for you, team. I thought it was Co you shot Kobe for ac accuracy and you shot Yeet for power. Oh, okay. That's the, okay. the official scientific reasoning behind it. Uh, notation and stuff. Yep. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, obviously there, again, it came down to time. I think time has been a bit of a pressure for Virtus Pro over all of their rounds on attack. So far, they're doing their slow stoic setup, but, you know, I'm sure... Ace some fantastic comparisons on just how long it's taking the uh, kind of Russian team to get themselves ready to go for that take. They want to make sure that they've cleared the pocket of space. Whereas Kavana, the amount of times we saw them go, let's put the pressure on. Like, let's get heated. Let's get inside the site. Whether they've been able to have the most successful start or not, where obviously we saw, you know, their first success was someone got dropped through the floor and then they went hot pressure onto site. We're not really seeing that from Virtus Pro yet. And I think that's dampening some of their sort of pace with Kavana, as we said before, they are a hyper aggro team at times. It's so strange to see, right? Because VP, they take really good control yeah. of the map quite early on. They managed to get some of the entries or at least a return kill as well. And what happens then, you know? They, they kind of turn invisible as soon as they reach the goal of getting the top floor control. And it's, it kind of hurts to see. This Kavana right here with Sloth going for a very aggressive spawn peak, able to pick him up. Sloth. Oh, he's having dirty. a good time. He's having a very good time, even though he only has two kills so far after Rio. Honestly, I mean, if they're against Pasha, those are important kills. It's impact frags, and he just made one of the biggest there. They don't just lose their ass, they lose Pasha, who's having such a big game. When he's in the rounds and able to find his way through, he was the first body dropped in the previous round, and he's the first body dropped this time too. And with the performance that's being put up by Gorgona on the opposite side, when your big gunners go oh. down, two of them to Sloth playing towards the same angle from two different stories. He's thirsting oh. for a third and he Sloth. finds it. And the Monkey King is making sure that Dez is happy and proud outside in a different call. Dez uh, quickly telling him a message, hey, can you, can you do a bit more, you know? I've been <laughs> hyping you up. You need to get some kills. And Sloth's like, all right, mate, I'll, I'll pick up three like that and suddenly bring this round into the hands of Kavana, which would be worth a point, mind you. It's already up onto four or five, meaning that if they win this one, that is one point in the bag. VP can only fight for two. And that situation is right now, they are stacking up. Grizzly, Sloth, both looking towards the cool vibe stairs. I believe there's one more member. Uh, Gorgona on the other side of the reinforcement has the opportunity to peek it. So I'm not quite sure if anybody is looking forward to be Look at that. Three people just <laughs> no. ready to run down the cool vibe stairs as soon as one member is being spotted by the bench. They're trying to take different angles from it as well. I believe Sloth wants to hop over the top. Grizzly wants to take the stairs and then they have the rotate swing too. But Kajeka is the one that stops him after so much destruction already finds the first for their round here and at least find some ingress. But you might not be aware that there was the vigil double stacking there on that hold and that angle. They still have that pressure if they need to. Rask dancing around double window, making sure they have some clarity here as I believe they might be going just to try and again open that little pocket of space, potentially summing up the idea of should we hit Aqua? Should we try and get in on Hooker? Either way, they're going for a big rotation here underneath. Jack still has the diffuser though, so he has to be very careful as he finds himself inside that building. Of course, two of the members, three of the members are located on the top floor of what we know, and I'm not quite sure of where the fourth one is located, but 
it definitely seems to be that he is willing to go from the cool vibe stairs. Those Rask is actually putting up some more pressure, some distraction maybe from the Aqua side of things, using the Gon6 to get rid of the Banshee. Meantime, Garzeka, however, needs to push up. Flashbangs are being zapped out. Rask is going to be able to pick up one kill with 50 seconds left. It's a full blind situation right here, but it's only up to Garzeka now, all alone in a 1v3 situation with much time left. So many impacts flying his way. And Kendrick picking up that final kill. It's Gavana on a point. Well, it's all smiles and about 50 impact grenades were lobbed at Cool Vibes. They had the clear. You have to give credit there to Rask, who was able to get in and get across the site there. If obviously, he'd been able to do a little bit more damage. Maybe if they doubled up there too. Obviously, you never really know how those win your one situations are going to go. He took it and pushed deeper to try and alleviate, obviously, Karzeka, who had the diffuser, to be able to get in on Cool Vibes. But Kendry had the lockdown from the opposite side. Uh, Virtus Pro, they're on death's door, but they've only two rounds away from fighting their way back to OT. So during the previous game, Trainhard was also two rounds ahead, and somehow Empire managed to uh, to bring it back. The Russians as well in that story. So maybe Phoebe is going to be able to repeat it right here in this game against Kovana. But that round, it was so convincing from Kavana. First of all, Sloth just getting three kills that probably two of them he shouldn't have gotten due to the fact there was a drone on him and somehow still managed to outgun them. And at that moment, you saw a three-person stack up down onto, onto the Cool Vibe stairs. They were like, peek us, do it. Absolutely, like, please, we want to have fun with you. And when it didn't give that, they just decided to throw every Pokeball they had at the person that was coming down Cool Vibes eventually. So, I mean, they, they were really planning it, it out. It works. <laughs> If it works, it works. It works, it works. And, you know, I guess that's the thing. They were very quick to react. They're quick to get in in terms of what they can apply and put the pressure back. You hope they had a heck of a team talk there, Virtus Pro, as we've talked about before. You know, they're always this team that has this possibility of fighting back. They always have this momentum with them, even in games where it feels like they're a bit on the back foot. It's not like with a lot of other teams that have found themselves struggling this season. They've been able to keep putting in these great fights, often all the way to the end. So you know that they still have some possibility and potential of being able to put this game back. At least to OT. Well, I say at least. That's all they could really hope for at this moment in time. Let's quickly check in the cams of VP just a second ago. I thought they were in a gaming house, but it looks like one of them is actually in a closet. He's, like, everything, like, everybody has good lighting, right? You can see someone else and... They have one of them that you just see the reflection of the monitor whilst we quickly revisit the 3k that Sloth was able to put up on the board and basically decide the round quite early on already for the likes of Kavana. Now match point is upon them. Six rounds they have on the board. They need one more for the full three and they have two rounds to do it. Doing so will put pressure down onto Na'Vi, their UK counterparts. There's definitely something they want to do after everything that happened in the Yukin season, I can imagine. Well, Sloth isn't able to get the early pick this time, but with the power of strong legs, is running all the way around across the top, making sure that he can be everywhere at once on this, again, sighted aggressive map. Kendrew inside the office, keeping a lockdown and making sure no one gets a quick push of presence before, but quick pushes of presence hasn't been VP's game. It's a controlled descent towards the site. There's a bit of a hello, I'm here waiting for you, and that's going to cause some attention, but that was it. He's just trying to draw some attention and maybe put a little bit of fear and I guess pull a little bit of those blinkers away from the rest of the push up here on Hookah. Stuff's on the job of a roamer as well, right? Just draw some attention in the meantime as WTG taking a lot of damage. It might actually be taken out right here, Grizzly. Just not able to get the kill eventually. Does, however, get it down onto WTG on the second attempt. And Sloth will be uh, taken out eventually by Pasha, and that is going to be giving the entry to VP. But the question is, are they going to be able to recover the buck? It looks like it is WTG crawling all the way back outside. No knowledge on the side of Kavana of the injury they managed to, uh, to, to hand out to them. 
It does leave VP in a very good situation now with that entry kill down onto Sloth. Uh, it looks like an Arctic has gone up to take the mantle of where they were before. Sees the Gemini and, well, that's just a Gemini. Kendrew pulls away and gets himself set up in a new position. Obviously, you put yourself there. It just takes a little bit of coordination and confidence to drop that man, but it also takes a lot of confidence to play this position too. There is Rask. Takes the head off of Kendrew with the clean angle and they found themselves with two bodies up but as we've seen before they've been in this situation across many teams and it sometimes doesn't really go their way they still have the hardest bit left in the Virtus Pro book which is lock out the round get in and make something of what you've been able to do with the round so far so much of this sunrise bar has fallen into their favor now they're weighing up just when they can really push in and dedicate themselves to the control here it comes there's the angle being held long to make sure they can catch anyone on the rotation but Anarchic suffers on the bottom of Cool Vibes. They spray towards the Diffuser Planter, who's going to be able to stick it in the back. Grizzly goes for the cover. Karjeka isn't confident. Pulls back, gets Grizzly. And there's Anarchic stepping in to finish it off. Drops the Diffuser Carrier. It's only Anarchic left VP. Have the cover that they need and have just one more round to get to OT. You're almost sort of panicking there in Kavala. Like two people, three people all moving down inside of Sunrise. Eventually still managed to drop down that diffuser. But it wasn't much more than that. It was a valiant attempt. There was no way that Anarchic was going to be able to run away with that with the amount of time that was left and the positions that the VP players were located at. And well, that leads it at the 5-6. That is going to be very close out of nowhere. Suddenly there is that one round. And if you make one more mistake or if the entry track doesn't go your way this time, you might find yourselves in overtime. You might find yourselves at only a potential to fight for two points if that's even the case. Now, the last time Virtus Pro were able to thread two rounds back to back was the beginning of the game. They've otherwise just been able to pull individual rounds between all of Kavanas, which have always been off of the back of another round. It's a bit of a, you know, concerning statistic because it's you, you're looking at that in terms of, okay, can they double down on success or is it that Kavana just kind of keep learning a lesson and learning it quickly and aggressively? I think one of the lessons here that they've decided to opt for is go back to plan A with their hold here above. The shield is back on 90. The mirror window is back potentially on the other side yet. Yeah, in fact, no, it's not at all. Mirror's not even here. What am I talking about? They've gone with a completely different hold in terms of their attention played through with information. But to be fair, so far, the mirror wasn't having the biggest impact on the hold. No, it didn't have the biggest impact. Uh, I believe it only learned, like, gave them one kill. Yeah. It's still worth it if you manage to get a kill, um, but not if <laughs> if, you, if you lose quick control of the actual room, which is something fact, that VP was it, pretty efficient at. I don't even think it did give them a kill. I think Ugona was just running around in the bedroom and then went back behind it and then got pushed um, out. Well, it, it wasn't even a mirror window. It was actually the mirror that actually got okay. the kill from the shield, I believe it was, um, back then. Either way, they decided to go for the mute instead, I believe, and that is, of course, going to be a bit of information denial, making sure that, for example, the Xkaras will not blow up or breaching charges are not going to have the intended effect that they would like to go for. It might slow down VP just a little bit. And that little bit might just be enough for Kavana to secure themselves the round here. As VP so far find themselves a completely clear western side of that building, this will be taking control of that in swift fashion as well, whilst, of course, making the rotates to make their lives a little bit easier. Yeah, again, Virtus Pro, as I've said before, they are steady on their approach. They do the same on any map, regardless of the kind of fervor it's put towards how quick and pacey it can be or how slow and monolithic it can be. Virtus Pro, they're the same. They love to lock down their control in their own time. And Kavana, they sometimes get a little bit antsy and edgy. Doing things like this, swinging and peeking on the luggage angle, seeing if they can take someone out on the roam. There's nobody on the bout, but there is a body around Aqua that is playing on the drone right now, so they might be watching and waiting for somebody to get a little bit too close to the wire. They heard it zip past. They, again, might still not be 100% convinced that there is somebody up in Aqua, and luckily for them, well, they're still paying a bit of focus, but they haven't quite caught what Sloth is doing here. That's another minute gone, and that's still just a slow bit of pressure and control being placed around the Sunrise Bar, the Blue Bar Corridor, and the kitchen side of the site. 
Now, Grizzly was being droned down in security. That's why he's holding down onto that hatch. He's expecting a push to be following up soon, but it's not happening yet. However, there is still W2G located around that corner. I believe he might just be rotating out as we speak right now to put the pressure down onto the side where it actually matters because there is only 45 seconds left on the clock. They have a sloth. We'll be taken down. Pasha will find him somehow and pick him up. And that is going to be the entry. That is going to be the roamer taking care of as well as WTG tries to find the one that is playing behind reception. With 30 seconds left, we'll not be finding him yet. That was a very important kill there. And you can actually see they had a drone that was just locked off on the angle in case they went for this overarching push. And Arkic has realized they're trying to dig it in, finds one, can't find a shotgun to get the second. And Rask goes deep with the diffuser buried behind the hard wall here. They're able to pick up some cover on the opposite side. Pings are continual, but with 15 seconds, well, they got to be more than continual. And they got to be aware that there's an echo drone. Hits the wrong man. Rask sticks it up high on the counter. Oh, no. The body was in the default plant spot. You understand why he did what he did, but Kohana fans are probably wishing he didn't now. What can they do? 30 seconds. They're trying to find those bodies that are watching over the top. Gorgona is still up there. Keeping a keen eye on the one that's inside the luggage. They drop. They go for the pinch, and the pinch are on one that they can find. They find it. They still got to find two more, and they've only got 20 seconds to do it in. There is one inside the courtyard, one on the door itself, pre-firing through towards the open angle. Pasha finds one, Kendrew. Well, he goes for something big and bold, but it's a trade that leads to an OT. There we have it. OT is upon us right there, and we're going straight into a tactical timeout for Kavana. And, well, understandably so. They had two rounds to try and clear it out and weren't able to do it yet. And that brings us... To overtime that brings us to the opportunity where suddenly Virtus Pro is into the matchup as well and has the opportunity to fight for the two points just like Empire was able to pick up their two uh, two points today. VP want to get back into the fight for the top four. Um, they do need to win here today to make that happen and with that they also keep Kavana back of trying to put that pressure down onto Navi. That's it. Obviously, we can kind of cite the positions that these teams are in, but the point differential between them is so close. It's really a lot of teams' sort of possibility of putting themselves on towards the top. Draws? Okay, if it happens to one or two games, it's very bad. If it goes this rate for all night and it's just one or two becomes every single game... It's actually quite good for a lot of these teams because it means nothing has truly decided so far. Obviously, it means that those teams at the bottom of the board, that gap towards BDS and Na'Vi becomes very big. But Kavana, obviously, if they get one point, that's still third place with only 13 points. That puts Virtus Pro on nine points and they're currently sitting around seventh. It's still a very close race, even if people are getting these little scrabbled and scruffy points in OT. There's still six points to be given away after today's play day, right? So it's still going to be quite close. And of course, the, the, the members are like Navi, BDS, G2, they haven't played yet. Some of them might leave some points behind as well. It's only going to be making the last couple of days even more exciting if the top four isn't clear. They might be wondering, why are we talking about the top four this much? And well, you know, there is no major, so you're not qualifying for the major. However, your placement will directly decide um, your six invitational points that will be awarded to you. Unlike, for example, APEC, where we first have the playoffs that will decide that for them. But the top four of each region uh, would be going to SI, that is, right? Uh, of course, we have three stages now, but ending top four at least means you're part of the best 16 teams in the world so far and give yourself a little bit of a better position to try and fight for that SI 2022 spot for the remainder of the year. It's also obviously worth sort of looking at the jumps of prize pool as well. Obviously, without any major, mm -hmm. you're looking at for fifth place, you get around four grand. For fourth place, 18. So the jump there between those two is monumental. Sixth place, three grand. It's one less. That's why people are so desperate to hit that precious top four. Is Without a major, that's where the prize pool gets divvied up and doled out. And... Well, that's what they're fighting for alongside those precious SI points. The SI points, obviously, statistically, it's not going to be as big of a jump because there's less of a jump to make across them. But, you know, when everything comes to kind of comes to that push and shove, it's so much better being in that fourth slot, even if it's by a scrape scratch of a hair. And all of these teams, they're fully in the belief and should be that they can hit it, if not better. Or is this the opportunity of them making it? Top three, even doable. 
team like VP if they would be able to take the win here today because it would mean they have the head-to-head -head over Kavana. That would mean that if they would end up on an equal point tally, it would be taking that place away from them. As right now, a lot of pressure is being put down from below. A lot of destruction coming in as well in the late mirror window. But I have to say that mirror window would easily be taken care of from the actual roof, I believe. Of course, they have the information that no one is there. They're all on that bottom floor, and that allows them to play the mirror window like they do currently. Well, Virtus Pro have stuck through on the attack so far, and I guess it's always hard to judge on a couple of different factors. One is the fact that it's obviously a map that we haven't really seen too much to get the full face of it, but two is that it's been even either half and... Well, over half of their rounds on it came in the previous two. They have some momentum, but Kavana have some lessons learned. It's putting them into practice in the heat of the moment before they transition over to their attacks themselves to try and cause their own brand of terror is the troubling thing. Steady drone work mm. comes out with Yana Gemini-ing up the cool vibe stairs. Swung early with a drone drop two as the pressure comes up. They're burning it very aggressively now. Anarchic is going to be the first point of cover. The frag grenade gets him very luckily for Verdi. Pro is he could have gone monumental there. Everything is exploding all over the top of those stairs. They are applying intense pressure, but don't have a situation to back it up. What they do have is Gorgona from deep. They flood in to Hooker, but they get dropped as they try and stick it. There's a man outside and one more for Gorgona. It's just Karzeka. It's just Kavana one round away from locking it off yet again. And that happened very quick. Very quick indeed. They managed to get the down onto the player on the cool vibe stairs. Unfortunately, not able to follow up. Walked right back into the nade indicator as it turned red and of course lost his life right there. I was still seeing Sloth like he is playing inside of uh, Aquarium. He has the opportunity of jumping down that hatch, of course. But it was already good going and I was down there. It jumped down from the balcony, went from below, managed to pick up the double kill. And suddenly the man counts completely in favor of Kavana. We now have the opportunity yet again, their third one, to go for the overtime match point. Line is being brought out, swapped out from the Ying, from the Candelas. And look at that. That's a Warden push coming in rather than the Echo. Well, that's the play against Candelas. Uh, that is that pickup there. That's the reasoning behind it. Obviously, there's no smokes on the board, and we haven't seen smoke plants played by Kavana at all today. They're not really that sort of team they love to get deep, get aggro, and we'll get the diffuser down afterwards. And here, well, they put an idea together. He still obviously has huge potential. He can still keep himself cool. But is that a change? Is that a sixth pick that might end up haunting them a little bit later? was definitely a good mind play coming down from Kavana, however, and this is why I say always use your six pick. It is a tool you get available to you. You might be able to mess up uh, the setup a little bit of the defenders you're playing up against because clearly VP wanted to play with the Echo. Clearly they wanted to have those Yokais, but if you're coming up against Candelas and you know how Kavana have overran you on this site during the first time you played it, you might be better off using the ward and making sure that the Candelas will not be participating to that factor, will not be making sure that you lose the round on the back of that. Unfortunately for them, they just lose the yokais and they lose the opportunity of well, cancelling out those candelas and it is something they will have to work with. Not quite sure. Okay, he, he does have the MPX with him. I was going to say he might carry the shotgun. Sometimes you see that. It's not going to be the case this time. Has the MPX to play together with the SMG 33. Difficult gun to control nonetheless. As a take from VIP seems to be coming in and they do have the Harp Reacher Anarchic. Most likely going to be opening up an angle as a C4 misses right there. No, they're just running in. They're going forward. That's a very aggressive push coming down right here. WTG will be able to take down one, but it's only up to Milan and Pasha right now to try and make sure that this round will stay in hands of VP. Here it is underneath. They're really digging their way in. The diffuser's planted and Pasha, you are all that is left and no more Kavana. And you can see the energy there on Kendrew's face. They get two points. They probably felt that they should have got three. The team talk came through and so does a hard fought victory. Virtus Pro still walk away with one, but for a team that is struggling,